Matt, Matt, buddy, I think we're live. I think I think we gotta we we, we have to do this for real. Get this show on the road. Oh my gosh, awesome, love it. Oh wow, Friday SketchUp Live Day. I wouldn't miss it. Well, I tell you what. Um, since you were so awesome doing it last time, I really, really, everybody should know I've been putting the pressure on Matt to just take it from now on. I'm like, Matt, Matt hit a home run. I, nobody wants to see me anymore. Like, let's, let's just, let's just evolve. <laughs> oh, well, I, uh, real quick. And it uh, looks like you have my audio sourced in twice. So there's some echoing going on. You just want to delete one of those. Okay. Let's see. Just one of the Mac OS uh, audio capture. Oh, sorry. Turn that eye back on and then turn the audio on. Capture. Uh, okay. How's okay. that? Okay, cool. That should be better now. Um, <laughs> see why I shouldn't be doing this? <laughs> no, you're good. You got it. Um, <laughs> You got it sorted. Uh, well, thank you for those kind words. I appreciate the uh, the support, the moral support, and otherwise for for the stream. But hey, you're the uh, you're the seasoned vet, you know. So when we come in for the last stream of the year, we knew you had to we had to have you at the at the helm today for sure. Sure. <laughs> well, thanks everybody for joining us. It is fun to be to be back with you, and hopefully this will be fun. Uh, this is our last stream of the year, so um, for the next few weeks, we will be off. So we're going to try to send everybody off with just kind of a fun modeling session. Matt, what do we have in store for today? What do you think? I don't know what you have in store, but uh, I'm ready to buckle up for the ride, and I'm ready to hopefully enjoy some some uh, of this model at the end of it, because I think you're... You're modeling some some architecture. Some first of all, it's a fantasy. It's not a real thing, but it's a building. It's a castle. But you're gonna be making it out of gingerbread. Isn't that right? That's the idea for sure. So here we are, holiday season. We're gonna have some fun, and um, I will swap over. Let's and let me know if our audio is uh, is still. Looks like there's two in this. Uh, this, this one, one as well. well. So you just... Yeah. All right. That is odd. Okay. But yeah, do it. seeing we're doing all right. Let us know out there if the audio is coming through okay. We, uh, as, as is often the case, we were fiddling with the settings before we got in um, every time. Anyway, yes. So Aaron did a fun gingerbread house a few weeks ago. And I looked at that and I said, I know he did a great job, but I, I he can't have all the fun. I I I want a I want a I want a piece of that action. <laughs> <laughs> so uh so naturally I said, Well, Hogwarts, yeah, let's <laughs> that's that's where you naturally go, right? Oh, what's a what's a nice simple way to to do a gingerbread house? Let's do Hogwarts. That's if you're going to do it, tracks. you know, you got to go big. <laughs> you gotta. Okay. So we're good. Yes, we are going to do this differently. Whereas Aaron modeled everything from scratch and model candy and model stuff. This model will be less of, um, you know, candy and all about the, uh, putting decorations all over it and more about in theory, let's say, and that's why I dragged this table in here that we wanted to actually be like i'm gonna get ambitious i'm gonna bake a bunch of gingerbread and i need um some guidance because i want to bake a you know semi uh recognizable version of something and in this case it's going to be hogwarts so we want to try to make this as real as possible uh and then we want to try to to um be able to print it out, you know, that's the idea is that we want to make something as real as possible and we'll just push it as far as we can get in our roughly two hours that we typically spend and then we'll see where we get. That's that's what we're doing. Um, Beautiful, I love it. Okay, Maybe you're not modeling from scratch, but I'm, I'm curious if you're gonna bake the gingerbread from scratch or is this like a store bought, you're making it out of a box? Well, you know, I've learned more about gingerbread this week 
Uh, <laughs> he <laughs> comes I, prepared, folks. <laughs> he does his homework. Homework's <laughs> different than like real real world experience, but um <laughs> So you brought the facts. Usually the co-host is supposed to bring like trivia or like fun stuff to talk about uh, about the topic of the week. But you, it sounds like you've done your uh, due diligence in uh, reviewing the gingerbread literature to bring in some interesting mm -hmm. tidbits. So, well, and and uh, I, I'll be curious as we go through this, please chime in with, uh, you know, gingerbread construction. I think Aaron... Uh, established this previously is is not you know this is a very western thing this is a very uh, it's not purely an american thing but um yeah let, let us know but there are some recipes out there uh from for example the royal chefs of, of uh you know for royalty in uk and stuff that have their preferred gingerbread and yeah if you're gonna build gingerbread it's a different recipe because it's it's far more structural if you will than edible <laughs> nobody wants to eat the the type of gingerbread you should be making or the type of frosting uh at, for adhesion that you should be using because it's far uh denser and um so but so in theory we're, we're making our own gingerbread uh i think We'll make it at let's say three sixteenths, which is I don't know what around eight eight millimeters, ten millimeters. Um, I probably have that way raw. No way idea. Off. <laughs> I have no idea, so I'm just <laughs> completely taking your word for it. <laughs> All right. So here's here's the plan, and I I started on this a little bit so that we could uh, move ahead a little bit. Here's what we're gonna do. I am building this so that it will fit. Again, this will be larger but in theory this is something that will fit on our table that we're working on over the course of let's say two weekends and a bunch of evenings and we're gonna make it uh but we want to make this buildable so these pieces so we don't want pieces that are so big that they wouldn't fit in a typical oven and i don't know what that is so we'll be guessing at that um and there are methods. I, I, I've seen people like you can create molds and you can actually do some really interesting stuff with, with curves. There are methods to make round curves and bake uh, on, on round molds. We're not going to do that. So we're everything is going to be uh, flat surfaces that uh, that we could, you know, without without being too technical and trying to make a bunch of curves. So those are some of the limitations we're going to be doing. Um, and nice. cheers y'all. Oh, where's my, it's finally my, my sometimes Santa mug is finally appropriate. <laughs> He's been drinking out of it literally all year. <laughs> and uh, This is the stream that it makes sense. It finally well, I'm glad you got the big, it is San, not only is the Santa theme, it's also super size big. And probably, hopefully, it's got um, some nice warm uh, liquid in there to keep you warm because it looks like you're cold. You have your uh, your cat. That's right. Put it out in the chat. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, burn. A little chilly where you're at, or are you just uh, you want to play the part of. Uh, it's a little of both. It's not. Stream. It's not terrible, but you know, I also want to want to play the part so. Also, it means I don't have to comb my hair. <laughs> Added bonus. Added bonus. Of being festive, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I appreciate your uh, considerations with the flat baking, though, because I certainly, for one, do not have any uh, any round baking implements in my home. I mean, I guess I have like a, yeah, the cake pan, but I don't have any specialty, you know, I'm not going to be making turrets out of uh, whatever whatever pans I've got. So, uh, you know, if you can stick it on a regular baking sheet, then that, that works for me. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, another piece of this, of course, is that <laughs> we are going to be simplifying, simplifying, simplifying. Um, so what we've done, what you see I've done is I've taken, and this might be too much. Um, Credit where it's due. So let's uh, let's do a quick 
there are a couple Hogwarts models on the warehouse. Um, I don't, I don't know which of these are iterations of the others, but I grabbed this one because it was called Hogwarts 2.0 now with Quidditch pitch, even though we're not going to have a Quidditch pitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so credit where it's due. Thank you, um, Vitor and or everyone else who's helped contribute to this over the years. This was the model that I found, and you can see that there's a lot more detail out here and Quidditch and very cool uh, cliffside. And we are going to be, so I just grabbed some parts of this that we're using as a reference, scaled it down uh, so that we can do just parts of this. Um, we're also going to simplify, of course, probably some of this stuff will make less tall. You know, it just has to look the part. All right, so. Where were we? Uh, we've got this building. So you have a copy of a component. That's what's going on here, right? You have a copy of a component that's up on the table, and then you're. I do. Uh, okay. So, so that I can, yeah, you know, I. It's not so much the graveyard in this sense that I'm <laughs> for as uh, as just a, a visual uh, reference of. I'm trying to build the basic forms and, and you know what, that let's, um, I think we can see what's happening here and we'll, we'll, we'll come back. I want to show one other piece that I'm, I'm going to try. I don't know if this will work entirely for what we're going to do, but for example, let me just take one of these, uh, and copy it outside the group just over here. Um, our friend and Co-worker Christina Inneroth created a tool that she released just uh, this past week that's that's more geared for laser cutting. It creates. Um, I'll show. I'll just uh, stop talking and show it. If I select this, I might have to go inside it. I forget. Yeah. So I'm going to go inside. This is um, Inneroth's laser tools. I'm going to select these faces, and then run this first command, and that's going to make a component, a unique component from each of these faces. And let's say it's uh, 3 16th, which is the, I don't care that it's called plywood. So if we look at this, it actually gave thickness to each face. So this is oh. one, I, I'm hoping to cheat our way through some of the construction of our gingerbread by doing this. Mm -hmm. This is one way that we'll cheat. Um, and here's another way that we'll cheat. Uh, if I select this, I can then say, um, lay it out for me. Wow. And, and it's going to lay out That's the pieces. Pretty... It's cool, right? Yeah. Um, now, if you are, just as a quick side note, the other aspects here, if, if uh, you can create box joints, I can up the segmentation or, you know, change it. And it actually will build box joints into your laser. So if that's something oh, you sweet. get into, it's it's kind of a fun tool. So that gets Christina, it's Interoth's laser tools. It's pretty cool. We're going to use parts of it to hopefully... Uh, make this work out for us. So we'll to come back to that. Through, well. Yes. In cheat. your words. <laughs> My words. <laughs> Most people would say like, you know, improve our workflow or like uh, take a shortcut or something like that. No, you're just being bold. I'm just, I'm cheating. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am improving my vocal workflow by calling it cheating rather than, as you said, I'm improving my workflow by optimizing the, uh, I'm cheating. <laughs> I'm lazy. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, just come out there, you know, just <laughs> at least you're proud of it. Well, thank you, Christina. Um, oops. Okay. I want, yes. 
to lock. Oh, we have a note, note in the chat. It's not cheating. It's working smarter, not harder. I, uh, I yeah, absolutely. So smart. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, um, if you've done something enough, the, you know, let's call it the hard way, the, you know, a different way, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's great. It, it feels like cheating. You're like, is this, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know and some people are like kind of precious to the old ways of doing things too. It's like you have to. Oh, right. You have to like spend your, you know, uh, what is that called? Like, you know, put the time in mm -hmm. of the old way before you like deserve to do the shortcut way or like, you know, kids these days, we'll never know how hard we had it. Cause we had to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> lay out our gingerbread by hand, you know, one piece at kids a time these days. That's right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I think whatever gets us to eating or you said it's not even good food, but <laughs> uh maybe just marveling at the beauty of the gingerbread house i'm still gonna eat a little bit of it i'm gonna try some <laughs> but uh yeah so whatever whatever cheats you can get uh to get us on the table gathered around the table sooner i'm all for it nice um as i as i think ahead which we don't have to obviously don't have to use that um, extension for everything, but I'm trying to think of head and be like, I only need to create flat faces instead of faces, instead of uh, objects with thickness. Mm -hmm. um, that sometimes is counterintuitive uh, when modeling some stuff like this, where I'm like, how would I build this? so that all my flat faces and what i mean by that is so in this example um let's say i wanted to create a little bit of you know this offset and if i think about how we might create that in reality it would be something where um i don't know but i would assume we'd have like oh well we'd have a piece we have the the separate pieces of gingerbread down here Right, each of these is going to be separate. Then we'd have this, and maybe even this would be doubled up, and then we'd have stuff on. I'm just, I don't know, but I'm just yeah. like, how would we do that? How would we build it? So I'm trying to think through this idea of this doesn't entirely work with that extension. What will, what won't? How do I need to anticipate our mm -hmm. cheat? So that's that's what's happening uh, a little bit in uh, in the mind space of what am I making here? I I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I like it because it's like a you're expanding your your mind, your way of thinking of it, you know, yeah. versus doing the normal modeling that you always do. Not that you always do the same thing, but I mean, like you know, normally you're not intentionally leaving single faces just kind of floating there but, right, um, right right in this case it's they like, are so yeah it's kind of like a mindset shift i get that um so with that in mind i could use the uh the good old um you could use any number of tools to create this uh ridge point but be fast enough just to do it this way. Yeah. I'm definitely not going to make it as tall as that real tower. And I suspect, okay. You're not going to because you don't think that the gingerbread will hold structurally or because of some other reason. Um, I, I, I imagine you could, uh, it's mostly out of practicality of how tall does it need to be to to have enough of the idea and also not be really difficult or super fragile. So it's a, it's a it's a bit of a mix of like yeah we could make this tall. 
I assume for me, I'm, I'm looking mm -hmm. at this. If you are going to enter your contest and uh, accuracy of what you're representing is paramount, well, then you better you better change it up a little bit. For me, this is uh, something that you're just looking to impress your mom with. And your mom's a little bit forgiving. At least my mom is a little bit forgiving. I feel like all moms are. <laughs> I hope so. Most moms would just be, you know, a regular gingerbread house would be like, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like if you get the Hogwarts uh, one going, your mom's going to be like, oh, my gosh, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Right? I'm going to hang this on my fridge. Ooh, that'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> all right so we have some of that um you know what let's let's uh start building this out uh into some pieces make sure we don't get too far along before we you know because because we may not build some of this stuff in the background just because we run out of time another piece that i i think would be kind of fun to do with this again not everybody would have access, but if you had access to a 3D printer, one of the things we could do, and I want to try and do, is create some custom 3D printed molds so that for decoration like these windows, we can be like, okay, I, I have my little cutout and I can just stamp my gingerbread and that will help me create the details. So that's another piece that I want to try and do. Fancy all about fancy here <laughs> yeah you're like uh bringing in some some wizard magic to uh enhance this gingerbread let's see so <clears throat> i'm gonna do this and we're gonna start building out the pieces um, now, one of the things that uh, to keep in mind with this, this will actually become more apparent for our cylinders, the, the few that we make. Mm -hmm. um, this does not, even though we might think, oh, this might be a mirrored component or something, each one of these is, a, is its own individual component. So if I edit this, it's going to be its own. So I may... Um, as I go through here, I will probably do stuff like this, where I delete parts of this and use um, mirroring to our advantage. Okay. Oh, so it does make components of it. These aren't groups. Right. These are all components, okay. but each face is going to be a unique component. Right. And so uh, for what we're doing, often we may want to actually have uh, and so uh, I will also be going into the component library and purging uh, on a semi-frequent basis so that I'm getting rid of the, the ones that we're not using. And we can quickly go to the home, right? There's just, now there's whole bunches of these. Let's purge. Nice. Always good to purge. Do a little cleaning of your model as you go. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know. Again, having not built this, this is one of those things. I, I, it's kind of interesting. If you get into this world and you're you're creating really clean um, gingerbread sheets, you can use tools that are essentially like you know sandpaper or um, uh, grates. Um, uh, you know, think of a, a fine lemon zester or cheese grater where you can clean up your edges or create um, chamfers so that you can meet stuff together. I don't know if it would be, if it would make more sense to build that into the model where you're like, because it's not going to be a precise thing. Yeah. Or if you just do that as you go along. So I, I, I don't know which of those makes more sense, but in this case, let's at least take these two pieces. Let's say they sit up here.
they would sit above here and we would want them to extend a little bit past. Mm -hmm. So, pardon me, going back to the cheese grater type thing, sandpaper, you weren't messing around when you were saying that this type of gingerbread is not really, it's more like wood than it is food. <laughs> <laughs> if you're taking sandpaper to it, right? I, it, it, it's dense. It's still fragile, but um, yeah. I wonder, uh, yeah, yeah, let's, let's mix some sawdust in and, and actually <laughs> make this, let's make Maybe, maybe we're on to something here, Matt. But... I know. I wonder uh, if uh, the people who build uh, gingerbread houses, like in the summer, they build sand castles. Like I'm all about building stuff that's not the typical material you'd use to build out of. I wonder. Can you think of other stuff like that? Like what? I'll help you out in the chat. I, I feel like there's got to be more... Um, more things that are like gingerbread houses or like sand castles or people are building architecture construction stuff but they're doing so with uh suboptimal materials maybe is a way you say it not you wouldn't say optimal like i did you would say optimal probably but um nothing like that yeah Uh, Donovan says paper craft houses. One of the things um, I could pull this out just a little bit, easily rotate over here, do it. But one of the things that just to say it, um, when you're depending on how you know you're modeling in the the accuracy one of the things i like to do so i don't have to move around when i don't need to is just use the scale tool and scale from the center and then i'm just getting both sides or something like this great tip now the question is We've done this and, uh, you know, there's going to be a couple of these uh, forms that are going to be similar to this. Does it make more sense to go through the process again we just did? Or does it make more sense to take this, copy it, make unique components, and go from there? I'm not sure, but we'll try that for now. I like it. Give it a shot. See so, what. Uh, see how it works. Let's do that. Yeah. Oh, Studio RT Cool says that AIA Connecticut has an annual contest to build something with canned food, and then donates the food afterwards. Oh, it's a cool idea. That's interesting. Reminds me of those, like uh, you know, you go into a supermarket and they have those murals made of like you know pop uh packaging or like yeah other kind of food packaging um so that's something but yeah that's sweet um also shouts to rat boy in the chat good to see you here <clears throat> Rice Krispie Treat, says Marty. Yeah, that seems like a good, could be a good building block, a good, you know, brick. Lenka says hello from Czech Republic. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Good to see you. Oh, we got Jody in the chat. Hey, Jody. Oh, didn't know if Jody was uh, going to make it today, but nice to see you. I thought I'm, ah, uh, see, I'm looking back here and I'm like, oh, 
I thought I made this unique. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm yeah. messing up my... Uh, what am I messing up? I... Oh, the ones... Okay, no, okay. We're okay. We're safe. We're safe. It's the ones back here on the ground and, and on our reference model. So I oh, did. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're okay. Whew. I was... Safe. Uh, it's baseball. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> now, one of the things that... Um, is a little bit we have to keep in mind again with the proposed way I said maybe we could make this work I think that Christina's tool uh, lays things out based on the axis right so right now the blue axis is going away straight out from this uh, we'll call it panel mm -hmm. if I go in and and you know just for example do something like this and you'd be like, why would you do that? Well, I'll tell you why I would do it. Sometimes when I'm lazy, when you're cheating, when I'm cheating, what I like to do, <laughs> um, which is not best practice, but again, I don't know. Let's claim I have best practices. These are, these are components. I was working on this one, but sometimes I would come in and say, Oh, you know what? I, I don't care about the axis. I just want to move both of these at the same time and, and pitch them to the new angle that I'm adjusting here. Well, that would move them off that axis. And then when we went to lay it out, they, those would probably be askew. So I have to kind of catch myself mm -hmm. from my bad habits. Be like, don't do that. Uh, keep make sure you're keeping an axis or there is a tool to re reorient an axis and we can always do it ourselves. I just something to keep in mind. Yeah. I'm like, okay, be careful. But as usual, love the flip tool. Making all these adjustments kind of makes me a little bit lean towards might make uh, make it go through the first process each time. Like making these adjustments is working, but also eh, a little bit of a, a little bit of a pain. More so perhaps than building it from scratch you do what you got to do <laughs> i was going to say you're committed at this point but i guess you could uh approach the next building differently too so that's true Too many things in the way here. Yeah, true. Okay, let's see here. Um, let's see if I can use my. I still should be able to do that. Well, uh, just as a matter of curiosity and general interest i've got a nice peppermint tea flavored or sweetened with just a little bit of honey honey is not always necessary obviously but on a you know if i'm going to act like it's a chilly day then mm. a warm mug of tea with some honey is definitely a favorite so what about y'all what's uh what's what's your uh tea of choice 
or a nice chilly winter's day where you're going to be planning your gingerbread masterpiece. <clears throat> yeah, I would say, well, right now I'm drinking some uh, some nice black tea. No, uh, no honey involved, although I'm a little under the weather, so maybe a little honey would be good for my the old sore throat over here, but um, mm -hmm. I would say uh, I would like a little, like a spiced cider. If I'm uh, like a warm cider mm. or something like this, I know that's typically more fall, but uh, that, that'll keep you warm. Um, that's, that's a nice thought. Even just straight ahead, hot cocoa will get you good. <laughs> Loving that. Loving that. What the? Well, this is weird. Oh, I get. I guess I was zoomed in too much. It's like I can't turn my model back on. Ooh. All right, this one we're just going to eyeball to about there. And then this guy. We got some good tea, chai tea recommendation. Chai. Petling. Uh, uh, tea. Petling? I think it's like a brand of, uh, of tea. Is it a brand or is it a type? Do do let us know. And is it uh yeah, like you say a black tea or a any particular version? I did okay. look it up and it's part of the Tetley group. English beverage manufacturer out of Yorkshire. Um so I think it's a brand, but uh, love to see it. Um, people said, uh, forget the tea, get a hot toddy. <laughs> right on. Uh, getting into the weekend, so more adult beverages make a little more sense. Um, Sven says, just straight up maple syrup. Just go a little syrup, like Super Troopers, you know, and they chug the maple syrup. I don't know if you've seen that film. I haven't seen that one. They have a race to see who can chug an entire bottle of syrup the fastest. <laughs> um, pretty gross if you ah. ask me. Lemon ginger tea with a spoon of honey. Yes, good call. Get you uh, warm you up, get you back to full health. Coffee with blackberry brandy. Right on. Get you from both sides. Get the uh, blackberry brandy. Sayeth what? <laughs> Sounds like you got a new holiday drink to try. I know. Ah, uh, oh, man. Will you look at that? What the? How come my wall is slanted? Who did that? <laughs> Who built this? It's whimsical, isn't it? It's supposed to be. Oh, you're getting some clipping. I am. Right. Um, and yeah, you're right. It's whimsical, and in it, it, nothing should be like perfectly right angled and and stuff. But again, we're going for uh, what we can actually pull off. And in that case, I do. Yeah. <laughs> um. Also, Jody points out, of course, that I said uh, cider. Michigan known, of course, for its apples and uh, has some good ciders. So perhaps if I was elsewhere, I wouldn't be so inclined to get some cider. But um, who knows? And he also mentions lemon or some kind of citrus tea with honey. Yeah, it's a popular one. It's, uh, it's a good go-to this time of year if you're in the northern hemisphere. Um snifter full of cognac okay you can tell kind of 
I know where you are, it's a little bit afternoon, but some other folks in the chat are maybe a little bit later on in the day over here with all the uh, alcohol suggestions. It's That's true. Um, Amalia coming in from Indonesia. Good to see you. Thanks for tuning oh, in. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Speaking of time zones. No kidding. You're, you're definitely in the evening. Yeah, what time is it there? Thanks for... Not the early, the early morning. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, and Sierra joined us on YouTube, mentioned earlier that they're designing their own 1,800 square foot home. Right on. That's really? Cool That's... Good for you. That That's takes, uh... incredible. Yeah. It ain't gingerbread, but it's something. <laughs> <laughs> I got to remember here what. Some of this stuff, like we wouldn't need this piece technically because it's batted up against this one. But then I feel like, again, I'm guessing that if we were to build this, we'd be building this tall piece and then assembling stuff to it. So it does need that structure, does need that piece mm. to, uh, as part of the process. But that's all guesswork on my part. So what you're saying is you're also an engineer. Now, Matt, them's are strong words, <laughs> stronger than I like to use. <laughs> You're a, a gingineer? That'd be a gingerbread <laughs> engineer. Now that I like. Now, I, 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 I would, being called a gingineer, <laughs> <laughs> I like that, uh, uh, that idea. Oh, Sierra says the home is a project for their portfolio, uh, and they took interior design for four years. Nice. So you got some good, um, some good background on how to how to design that house. That's cool. All right. So I'm just running a quick test to be like, yeah, all our pieces look like they're laying flat. So in theory, so far. Um, You know, what I don't know is something like, I assume this will, let's just, uh, for kicks and giggles, paint a couple colors, because that we, we definitely would want to be able to, yeah interpret this and be like we yeah no no what is what here so I'm yeah undo my beautiful glorious color choices but good to know that that's maintained does christina's extension also lay them out nicely on a baking sheet it it just space it as you saw sort of <laughs> spaces them out long wise so we, we'll have to do a little more work to interpret how how uh how to best get these on a baking sheet maybe for v2 yeah i know that's a pretty pretty big use case probably for this so i'm <clears throat> about to see if if gingerbread is uh, even remotely in her consideration <laughs> christina have, have you seen she does um she uses her laser a lot for really scaled train modeling. Uh, really impressive stuff. So she builds a lot of her own miniatures and it is very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen some photos. It's uh, yeah, really impressive. All right. So uh, what we were talking about earlier is in this case, typically we'd want one component instead of each of these being individual. So, I drew a 
line so that I have the center and so that I can take this one and make sure that those are all. And the same thing up here. Nice. Lock that. Uh, Raphael asked about the extension that you're using, and I believe, check me if I'm wrong, it's called Enerot Laser Tools. That's, I think, correct. Um, unless to... she changed the name to Super Awesome Mega Useful Enerot Laser Pew Pew Tools, because. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she was considering it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's just good branding. You right? know, it's easy to search for. It's memorable. Um, yeah, probably have a cool logo associated. Mm -hmm. Every time you use the tool, it just makes that sound. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> uh, so I'll try to find a link to it and drop it in the chat. Need here. Need to maintain a center reference so I can stack this stuff up. Let's see here. And just for those who were uh, waiting to see if the crash is imminent, I did just save. That's good thinking. So hopefully we won't. We have averted any major disasters, but we'll see. Still open to it. Everybody in the chat is booing. <laughs> like if, you, if you asked our chat, they would just want you to try to. Everybody goes through the entire stream without saving. <laughs> you know what? Based on the amount of time we have, I think what we'll do. So if we look back here at our reference model and like what we can actually get done, mm -hmm. uh, let's do the Great Hall over here and since we've already started doing stuff let's do these towers um it would have been cool to do some of the bridge but we'll we'll just skip a bunch of this stuff back here uh in the interest of what we can get done with the time we have sounds good so you're going to do the quidditch pitch off stream yes off air. The yeah. uh, the gingerbread Quidditch pitch with motorized players. Well, yeah. <laughs> and they actually fly their little drones. Exactly. Oh, you know what I saw? It was the coolest thing. Somebody had taken. Okay, so if you're familiar with um, Charlie Brown, not everybody will be probably, but uh charlie brown and snoopy his dog and his little red house and snoopy pretends many times that he's a world war ii or even world war one but uh fighter pilot who has to who is constantly being fighting the red baron and he mm -hmm. he's almost he i don't he i don't think he ever wins the red baron always shoots him down anyway somebody take took that took an inflatable snoopy built the house essentially as a kite and stuck some um propellers on it that were fairly small so they 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 weren't prominent uh but there was enough of them that they were just flying around snoopy snoopy's house like a plane that's awesome it's like people are amazing <laughs> Let's 
Somebody should do that with Santa's sleigh. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. That would be oh. totally fun. Let's see. You mentioned you, we probably don't have time to do the bridges. Peter says, I've heard that bridge work can be pricey. And he has a tooth emoji. <laughs> so too much gingerbread, you're probably going to have to. Right. Uh, some tooth decay and then you end up with a bridge so all this candy uh you definitely have some bridge work mm -hmm. um have you had a bridge matt yeah they're not pleasant no the most i've had dental work is just fillings i mean i had braces but just <clears throat> you know no implants or anything like that root canals what about you i did have a bridge just in the last like sometime in the last year or two um, my first which is welcome because i know many people who've had multiple by this time in fact one of my kids has to have one and um right they're just creating a, a whole new tooth for you and then like carving away the part of your tooth and then permanently gluing on a new piece of your uh, and forever, you're like that. I, I, it, it feels so weird. Your new tooth. Oh, so you're constantly doing this. And it's all pointy and all stuff. So, sorry. Oh, wow. Dental work. Who, who got us on dental work? It sounded Talking like about um, bridge. the wet bandits when he says, What happened to my tooth? <laughs> yeah. My gold tooth. That's what it sounded like. Home Alone. Mm-hmm. Um, long one. My tooth. Speaking of Home Alone, I know not, no, not everybody uh, probably watches the Christmas movies, but Home Alone is a favorite around our house. Uh, what's the best Home Alone movie? Home Alone 1, Home Alone 2, or, of course, of course little known Home Alone 3. Starring, not starring, but Scarlett Johansson. Uh, is a oh is she in Home Alone three? I think she's a sister. Yeah, I didn't remember that. I mean, immediately anyone who answers Home Alone three needs to just be banned. I honestly, I did like it when I was a kid because it's it very much like just completely leaned into the cartoon. Mm -hmm. I mean, Home Alone the first Home Alone obviously has like the twenty minutes at the end, which is kind of like a little you know. Looney Tunes ish or whatever. Um, and a lot of people that's what they remember from it, but it's not the majority of the movie is not like that. But Home Alone 3 is just like a complete live action cartoon of just yeah. <clears throat> well, I haven't revisited it in a while. Maybe I need to uh check it out. Barry says they made more, they have more than three, they have a four. Uh why not? They paid 900 of the, I don't know, what was that little dinosaur movie? Land Before Time. There's there's like 927 <laughs> of those. So True. why aren't there a couple dozen Home Alones? They probably made bank on those too because it was all like direct to VHS. And then <laughs> like that, like. Movies and music just used to make so much money because people would spend like 20 bucks to have one for their house. And now it's like yeah. 20 bucks a month to watch unlimited of these. This is a ripoff. And it's like, I don't know how much money people used to spend on that. I don't know. Jody's rooting for a home alone cinematic universe where we <laughs> bring all the, you know, lonely children together. Is there a Shark Boy and Lava Girl Home Alone edition? <laughs> or a Power Rangers Home Alone edition? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, we, we could do something with this. Yeah, licensed IP. So if anybody, any of you are listening out there, we have the rights to it because we we said it first. It. Yeah. <laughs> Like sending an email to yourself with an idea so that you have it on record or whatever, right? Yeah. 
that's the benefit of streaming. Everything we come up with is uh, ours in perpetuity. Um, we streamed it here. How come we're not charging everybody for this? That's a great question. We need to have like a donation link. You know, a lot of streamers, they have like, you know, people give them, they like tip them money, you know? You even came dressed up today. Oh, you know, right. Like, like, you have the themed mug. Like, you put a lot of effort into this. A lot. <laughs> so much. <laughs> I color coordinated. I picked a hat that would color coordinate. Uh, also, I mean, the truth is, so many hats are green, and I knew I couldn't wear one that would basically be like <laughs> cutting holes through my head. I mean, I Chopping could. Head and head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would be really distracting. So. But yeah, it's more color of a coordinated stream thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I am good as we move forward, I'm going to be uh less and less accurately kind of making the gingerbread pieces fully work and more just trying to get uh I mean the idea is there. We're kind of doing the same thing again and again at this point, so we should move into some details. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, we're rounding the halfway point here, so I know you wanted to get those like stamps for the details in there. Yeah, uh, so let's. I don't know what else you have up your sleeve for uh, to show us, but I'm happy to go wherever you want to. Let's see where we go from there. We don't need to have that many either, so I'm just going to eyeball general size. And let's, <laughs> it's always good to do a reality check on something like this where uh, I'm like, oh, that's not even an inch wide. So we have to be a little bit, unless you're starting to make really thin gingerbread which maybe you know this is a thinner version but let's be a little bit realistic about how big these actually are <laughs> yeah get to check that tape measure tool every once in a while mm -hmm. we were mentioning about the tips uh keggy mentions you know there's that site that's like the buy me a coffee, whatever kind of site where it's like, whatever, you know, $4 thing or whatever. But he said, mm -hmm. because you have such a big mug, it would add up pretty quickly. <laughs> Buying you a coffee would be like a $20 endeavor. Thanks. Thanks y'all. <laughs> Fill her up. <laughs> Let me back up, back up the coffee truck and let's fill it up. <laughs> Jody also points out that his models become uh, less accurate the longer he models as well. I find that hard too. It's like, you know, you have you commit to a level of detail, and then it's like, after a couple hours, you're like, eh, maybe I'll just kind of make this one a little bit less, right. <laughs> a little bit less. All right, let's see here. So we need, if we wanted to cut out this. Uh, shape, mm -hmm. then we need to basically reverse this. Reverse, reverse. <laughs> so let's see. Let's say. Our 3D uh, print model is going to be something like this. Except for a bit more. And this gets into 
3D print. So let's say we're making this with a standard 0.4 nozzle. Um, if I use that and say 0.4 millimeter, um, I might model this with that specifically in mind and then be like, and then I'd make that, <clears throat> you know, so we'll be printing just one layer for a little bit and that would give us our cutting edge something like that anyway something mm -hmm. like that and then i don't want a harsh overhang so i don't have to have supports so let's say it's something like this always good to have in mind your final output of your model when you're Modeling something for the real world. Mm -hmm. Actually, I print this upside down so that overhang won't matter, but this will be fine. Um, so let's have this. Let's copy it. Uh, I'm not sure how well this will work, but let's find out. I, my overhang here is a little too much, so... For my follow me operation to work out, so something like that. Alright, so I got that, I got that. Move that back, I moved it five inches. So, I think, what do you think? That looked like it would cut out the shape we need. Looks like it to me. So we just need to add a little bit of thickness down here. And then, this is uh, where we cheat, be lazy, be efficient with some version of that again i'm going to take this and it's got you know some messy geometry in here let's see how much we can clean up with the solid tool boom there yay you love it Yeah, so that should, you know what, you know what, though, let's do, uh, I, what I'm thinking now is, one, we should not have this uh, fully enclosed, because once we stick it in there, we'll be pulling it out, and it would be like, ah, I can't get it off. So we need to print little, um... <laughs> Basically, let's uh, let's create you know some openings so that we can poke through here and sort of poke it out. Smart. All right, something like that. I think that don't need this massive. We actually don't need, um, it's, it's kind of silly to make this whole thing so big, uh, don't need any of that, but in the interest of fix it later, in theory,
Nope. I'm not fixing it later. I'm fixing it now. Who said? We'll do it live. It later. I can't. It just bugs me. How to do it. Now, I just did a, a skill builder on uh, selections, and there are a couple ways, like, we could see if we could do this. Double click, get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of that, and get rid of that. Follow me, done. See, I should use my own advice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this, I'm going to copy this just for our visuals here. Get rid of that. Make this, let's say it's a, I'm going to weld these two pieces. This is a one eighth because we're making some thin. Uh, here's something that came up this week. Uh, this hasn't applied to the desktop yet, but for anybody who's using the web version, uh, maybe even the iPad version, um, there's a new setting that we've seen where when you try to rotate something with the move tool like this, that option is still available, but by default, it's an option and it's turned off. So if you go, if you're using the web version and you don't have this and you want to have it, uh, it's, it's just in the settings, you can turn it back on. Um, the, the dev team never does anything haphazardly there. They did it for some good reasons, but I'd be curious what y'all think about that as a, I'm not trying to <laughs> start a turf war. Like I say, they always have good reasons for what they're doing. But that's one of those things that I use a lot. But to be fair, it's also one of the things that Eric doesn't. He does not use the move to root, rotate that often, and he didn't miss it. So just even internally, we sort of have some that will be like, oh, why? And then some that like, oh, finally. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm curious to see people in the chat. How often do you, when you're looking to rotate an object, how often do you use the the rotate handles on the with a move tool or uh, do you use the actual rotate tool itself how did i lose my piece down there i know sometimes especially when you're kind of more zoomed out they can uh you can accidentally select them when you're trying to like select that the corner of a group or component for mm -hmm. instance yeah so sometimes they do uh, seem to get in the way These and flip them. Nice. So we have those. We have an actual piece that we have built that we could print to make those. Um, I think that part would be fun. So given more time, I think, uh, especially some of these that are larger, and you could get some more detail in, do some of that too. But let's come back and let's see. What do we have? What do we have? Let's see. We decided we're not going to do those back there. So we need to do these towers, I think. Those will be, those will help sell the idea those i like it are hidden there we go so is so this let's make this component unique because i want to get rid of some of my reference lines
let's not be so ambitious with the height. Same thing here. Just a little, just a little bit, bring it down. Okay, let's see if create. Bada bing, bada boom. Boom. Now I don't know <clears throat> if there's a best practice for corners. Um, that'd be interesting to see. We're just gonna and like we meant to do that, and that we meant. Well, now that's interesting. I don't know why it made this one in particular on a different axis. Did it did it do that to the rest of these, I wonder? No. Why this one? Huh. I don't know. So if we took these, laid them out, it's got that, that one in particular skewed because of the axis. I don't know why. Not a big deal, especially since we can just do this. Change the all axes. And we don't want the opening. Well, anybody got anything uh, of particular interest planned this weekend? And I'll lead off by saying I'm not asking because I do, because I don't. Um, Those you. are always the best weekends when you don't have anything planned. Yeah. You're going to go get some nice cider, Matt? <laughs> um. Perhaps now that you mention it, I'm like, oh, I could go for a nice cider. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. I got to say, I got, don't really have too much on the on the docket. Um, probably a little rest. Like I said, I'm a little under the weather still. So um, rest and fluids will be on my uh, to do list. And we all hope you'll be feeling better, Matt. Matt's whole family has been a little bit under the weather, so that would be a very chill weekend for you, I imagine, would be very welcome. Yeah, well, thanks. Um, Jennifer over on LinkedIn says that she's packing to move cross-country. Oh, that's a... What? It's exciting. It's exciting and nerve-wracking. Wow. Yeah, it's a big one. Um. Well, good luck with that, both the packing and the move. Woo. I need, did I? That's not our friend, Jennifer, is it? Uh, one of our friends and co-workers who's been with SketchUp for close to a decade uh, is, I, I saw recently, going to move on, taking an exciting new uh, job, new opportunity. But uh, Jennifer was part of our support and sales team for a good while, so definitely wish her good luck. But oh, I don't right know on, yeah. it's the same Jennifer. Best of luck to her. No, I don't. Based on the little uh, thumbnail that I see here, it doesn't appear to be her, but um, wish her a lot of success. Paul says he's finishing a model to enter the Prusa modeling competition is the only thing that he's got going. 
Ooh, tell us more. Because Prusa, 3D printing company. Um, so I presume it has something to do with that. And you'll be going up against people dealing, uh, modeling in all kinds of stuff. Um, Fusion and Blender and, and other stuff. So that's, uh, that's an interesting interesting challenge yeah what the blazes who did this <laughs> You know, it's so silly of me. I erased some of these and then I copied the same. I, I did exactly what I was trying to. <laughs> I still. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Woo. Come on. Come on, Tito. Wake <laughs> up here. Barry in the chat is celebrating this as the last SketchUp stream of 2023. He says, Happy New Year. And the same to you. Thank you. Indeed. Last stream. Um, and I'm floundering around with this gingerbread roof. Move along. Move along. <laughs> Just wait till you have frosting all over your fingers and you're trying to piece it together. That's going to be the real, the real challenge as I see it. But, um, but no, I think you're, it's coming together over here. You are right about that though. Whew. Uh, wait till you get, get messy, making it real. Yeah, you thought the modeling was messy. <laughs> I know, right? Actually building this, if we could if we can build something pseudo representative and give us some guidance within uh, a few hours, then you get to go spend a few days to make it. <laughs> that uh Here's a great, uh, great question from James in the chat. Very serious question about what type of hard drying frosting does SketchUp recommend for mortaring gingerbread joints? He says, will there be a new frosting gluing tool for this? Maybe we need to add that to components, you know, glue mm. to um, instead of horizontal surfaces or whatever, it'll be glue to gingerbread. That's a great point. You know, our development team is always working on, <laughs> pardon me, new tools for people to make their projects come to life. And um, that's a great recommendation. So we'll add it to the feature requests. We need gingerbread gluing tools. Very good. All right, so this one, without getting exact, just let's make this one a little bigger. Just two, an inch or two taller. Nice. 
Nice. All right. And this one goes right here. Who's driving this train? <laughs> and I'm all for it. The Polar Express. Let's move this uh, over so we can just push this up against this other one. Okay, well, we are running out of time to make this definably Hogwarts. Um, let's see, let's see. I don't know. Like if we take this move it over build a courtyard around here um like we don't need all those back buildings but it is kind of you know that that bridge and that little courtyard are kind of pretty notable so darn it i don't know that well i don't know how to like the other thing though you know, obviously, to make the bridge, unless unless we elevated it, uh, we need, for example, we need to be able to make a base that we can. Right. And that doesn't have to be gingerbread at all or anything. But um, even if you were just using, I don't know, scrap cardboard or something. So we start running into these problems. Uh, da 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 da. What to do, Matt? What to do? This. Okay, first of all, we're going to take this building. I just be like, we're just making a bunch of generic one uh, versions of these. That'll be our courtyard. That sounds good to me. What do you think, Chad? Is there anything in particular you want to see? Do you want to see. Uh... A bridge over here? Do you want to see some any other particulars in the the Hogwarts campus? Yes, yes. Do tell. Very nice. So this one is going to be our. I have one of these over here.
<laughs> Peter said we got radio silence over here. That's true. Um, I know. I can't. I can't. I I'm like, oh, uh, <laughs> no, I'll let you. I'll let you go. But uh, um, or I'll let you keep modeling. But um, uh, you know, this gingerbread stuff definitely reminds me of um, uh, different kinds of. Uh, cookies that people make this time of year or different kind of sweets is there any does anybody have a specialty of what do you make every year that you look forward to this time of year of um particular treats that you're that you're psyched about i personally i just like a traditional you know a cookie like a frosted sugar cookie um you know you can make a little whatever you get the cookie cutters out and uh I just always look forward to that. Even if they're not the most like most tasty, they're still still fun to to decorate. You know, it's part of the part of the tradition, at least in my house. So I like to get that going. What about you, Chad? Is there any? Um... That sounds nice. Any? Candy you're looking forward to in your stocking. Stalin bread with marzipan. What? Right on. I'm not sure if I'm familiar with what that is. I'm not either. That sounds interesting. Yeah. Looks like a kind of a traditional German uh, Christmas bread. Uh, Jody says homemade Chex mix. Always a win, especially if you get the puppy chow version going with the peanut butter and the um, powdered sugar. There it is. I knew what I was looking for. Um, that's good. Eric uh, mentions oatmeal craisin cookies he likes. Not everybody's a fan of the oatmeal craisin or raisin or other variety, but... I agree with Eric on this one. I, I do like like that variety. Yeah. Good for a little break uh, from, you know, just straight up chocolate or, you know, just straight up sugar. Let's see. Well, okay. So for some of this, let's say we have adding little frosting windows and stuff. Yeah, that's stuff you can add uh, at the table. Take advantage of these components that we built. Did you know, Matt? <clears throat> so again, in the realm of uh, learning about some gingerbread techniques this week, mm -hmm. you can take things like Jolly Ranchers or other hard candy, sort of hard semi-clear candy, and when you form your gingerbread, roll it out, and then you you know use guides or stuff to cut out your shapes and if you're cutting out windows you can crumple that stuff up there's there's also clear ways to do it but if you want colors you can crumple it up drop it in there and then when you bake your gingerbread it melts and again you're, you're baking this on a probably a silicone sheet non-stick silicone sheet it melts into a colored window effectively so you can create a like cool, a stained glass kind of mm -hmm. situation yeah oh. it's kind of fun yeah, that's a good idea. I would have never thought to do something like that. So, 
ingenuity of the gingerbread community. Mm -hmm. Trying to think if uh, this would serve us better as it's just sort of a white frosting window. Right, so it looked more like that. Of course, my tiny little stuff here is. Okay, I'm not going to build this on here. That would be silly. <laughs> All right, your words, not mine. And who would accuse any of us of being silly? You have a save reminder in the chat here from Peter. Thank you. Also, a couple other uh, favorite uh, Christmas treats. Peanut butter cookie with a Hershey kiss on top. Very good. Barry says his mom's Christmas cake uh, is good. Mince pies also. Sounds tasty. <clears throat> and Peter, of course, saying that only a, a licensed engineer could uh, <laughs> come up with with windows like this. So, oh, it took me so long to get my engineer license. <laughs> so I appreciate that comment. It is a lot of work to become a licensed engineer. There's so many <laughs> fakers out there. Oh, I know. You can. You know, proudly have the the letters after your name. Uh, showing that you are, in fact, certified. <laughs> All right, what is a good... I have to... What is a good gingerbread color? I think we need darker than that. Hide all these edges so that this shows up a little better. Nice. You know. All right. Yeah. So let's start adding some frosting details because we've run out of time to actually build our gingerbread house, our gingerbread uh, Hogwarts. But we can add some frosting details. Got to have the frosting. Seriously, that's the fun. Transom in the chat. How are you? Good to see you. Eric wants to know if we're going to get gumdrops. No. I can answer. You do not become a serious gingineer and mess with gumdrops. How dare you, sir? 
<laughs> yeah, that's definitely uh, a faux pas. Well, it's an entirely different field, you know. You know what? That that's like asking uh, if Eric's a landscaping uh, landscaper. Shots fired. Eric, are you a landscaping landscaper? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, he's gonna be so mad at me. Let's make a um, I don't know about you, Matt, like I don't know what the right word is. I feel like I'm in race mode. You only got 20 minutes left to. Oh, yeah, putting on the afterburners. Mm hmm. Well, you know, you get where you get, and. Um... That's what it is. And that's what it is. Okay. I did not make this a nice uh, gluing component, so that's not working. But that's okay. Um, Syed has a question about, uh, is there any method for smooth curves? Um, SketchUp is a surface modeler, which means uh, all the geometry is just made up of edges and, uh, and faces. So um, you can increase the number of uh, segments on your arc, but um, there's not going to be any like true curve um, within SketchUp. There's ways to export that would export um, curves um, or you could use layout for uh, for um, you know true curves but uh, within SketchUp what you see the segmentation of the arcs is uh, just fundamental to how the, the modeling engine works excellent answer yes so just to reiterate, I could come in here and, and dial this way up to like 60 segments. Uh, no, actually I can't at this scale. It's gonna try and prevent me. Um, but uh, so, and I'll make that one. And then this curve, let's say I'll make it uh, eight S, eight segments. You can see. You can control the number, uh, but if you want true, true, yeah. Just keep in mind, that's just not what SketchUp is built on. That's not how it's, but you do have a lot of control over that amount of accuracy in your model. Okay, let's see. Let's go over here and say
Um, and yes, yes, your model will get uh, heavier if you increase the number of segments, especially if they're in components that are copied um, a lot in your model. Depends on what you're making, but um, but yeah, if you have a complex model with a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, components that have a lot of faces, especially if you're doing like follow me operations, that'll multiply the number of uh, of faces in your model quite a bit, which yeah will impact the display performance. Yep, so uh, model what you need, model to the detail you need. Sometimes that does mean like you can model up uh, with a lot of detail, increase your segment count, etc. But sometimes it means turning it down. Very true. The try that again oops let's try that again 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 and like here where I'm modeling this uh, these corners with just four segments because this is at a tiny scale See, one sixteenth, that's huge. It's even more than I realized. Um, when will we be streaming next? That's a good question. So this is our last stream of this year, um, but we do model on Fridays uh, at the same time, um, typically. So that would be, we start at noon mountain time, whatever that time is uh, where you are. Um, and our next stream will be um, January the 5th. Uh, so the first Friday of January will be our Next time we're back here, um, yeah, that's the next, next time to catch the live stream. Of course, we do have all of our previous streams uh, on our YouTube channel, so you can go in there to the SketchUp Live playlist and uh, relive some of our past moments. Um, and Paul points out that modeling for 3D printing does really help to teach um, level of detail and uh, consistency in modeling, um, which is a good point because, um, yeah, like you uh, showed earlier, knowing the kind of the width of your nozzle is important when you're modeling for 3D printing, and then, um, you know, the scale that you're actually going to end up at is uh, makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know about y'all, if you're seeing. I want to take this tiny little triangle and just copy it. And I see this all the time when I do something like this. It does not want to stay in place. I'll move it here. Okay. Got it. Sometimes, man, sometimes like just, just please stay on the face I'm, I want you on. Uh, here, and we won't build it, but um, I think it would be uh, easy as well to create, again, if, if we're 3D printing, we create a little block that would have the opposite of what we just created. 
I would say we're not going to create it, then I can't help myself. And we 3D print something like this, and then you could stamp in some things like brick texture or roof texture, um, stuff like that. It'd be interesting. Let's see, what else we got over here? This is what happens as uh, as we start running out of time, and I'm trying to uh, finish something, and these are uh, modeled on all kinds of axis, and I don't take the time to correct that. And then, then what's interesting is that it's I'm like I'm not taking the time in the moment to do it, but then I'm usually doing it here anyway. So it's like it, take it take the time to do it. You're gonna <laughs> do it eventually. Because you're going to run into, uh, it's so, uh, I don't know what the right word is, counterintuitive or something to be like, oh, I'm saving time by rushing through here, uh, something or other. And then you're like, no, you're just going to have to do it later. <laughs> and then you're going to get in trouble in the meantime. That's a tough lesson to learn. Well, and even though I am a licensed engineer, it's one I haven't learned. <laughs> oh man, I I need I need a shirt, a graveyard shirt, and a licensed engineer shirt now. I, I think you've I think you've done done something, started something, Matt. <laughs> Keep an eye out for our merch link in the future. Uh huh. Yeah. <clears throat> all right we're we're about out of time as always didn't get nearly as far as as i had hoped and uh, it would be fun to but let's see we bring this over i'm going to start ungrouping these so that we have individual pieces um and see if we can actually lay this out. Now, some of this stuff has embedded components. I'm not sure what it's gonna do with some of it, but if we take this and uh, giving us a little warning that some of these are <laughs> uh, badly scaled. But otherwise, there we have it. We have, so we can see, you know, we need to go back and fix some of the axes. Um, but that's cool. Like we could do yeah. that. We could do that. We have the pieces that we could uh, come back through, take some better time to uh, line them up. And then we'd have the pieces. It's gonna be a long day of baking to get all this. Uh, all this Such a out. long day of baking. <laughs> it's funny. Which um, I must. Which of these is not the bad scale? I know I've got access issues, but I didn't know one of these. Maybe I carrying something over from here, which was uh, originally much bigger. So, who knows? All right, we're going to pretend like this is more interesting when it goes like that. And then this fits over here. And that we're pretending like we created something. Now, 
<laughs> it's, no, it's you definitely did. Congratulations. That looks great. <laughs> it's not necessarily Hogwarts, but again, my mom will be like, oh, I love it. You're the best. <laughs> and I hope all y'all trust your moms will too. So. <laughs> I say 10 out of 10. That is a gingerbread <laughs> Hogwarts if I've ever seen it. And I'm not even your mom. Oh, wow. That's why you're, you're all right, Matt. Let's line this up. Folks saying goodbye in the chat. Thanks for uh, for tuning in, not only today but of course uh, throughout the entire year. We're happy to have you. We're you know we would it wouldn't be the wouldn't be SketchUp Live without you. So cheers for spending your Friday afternoons with us or uh, whatever time it is where you're at. Um, it's been great. I definitely have a, a lot of fun every Friday. Um, I know everybody else on our team does as well. So. Um, Props to you. Thanks for thanks for watching, and definitely look out in the new year for some some great streams as well. Yeah, thanks very much if you joined us. Um, uh, definitely appreciated. Uh, everyone have a very lovely whatever you celebrate anything or nothing. Have a lovely couple of weeks. Lovely holiday. Um, hope everyone gets to spend some time with family and just has a wonderful time. Absolutely. Throw these in here and then call it good. James also pointing out that, um, I'm doing a little editorializing here, but although people make make fun of your Santa coffee mug, you didn't have to get it refilled at all for the entire stream. So, um, you know, that's good thinking. Who makes fun of it? <laughs> what are you talking was, about? I added, I added that part. Uh, what is happening? It certainly here? wouldn't be me <laughs> or anyone I know. <laughs> but, um, What are you talking about? This is <laughs> I t I'll tell you who makes fun of it. My kids and my wife. <laughs> right. Even though it was a gift from them. The fact that I drag it out all year. <laughs> uh, that uh <laughs> Sure, I could see that. Uh, but today, of all days, no, it's the perfect mug for today. For today, for today it works. All right, so here we are. Our, got it. Got our nice little gingerbread. Let's throw a quick... Ambient. There it is. <laughs> Love it. All right. Tis the well, season. Well, we we made something. We always make something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so thanks everybody. Thanks again. We'll, we can call it. Have a lovely uh, weekend, lovely couple weeks, lovely holiday. Be safe, be well. Matt, thanks, buddy. 
Thank you. Another great stream. Good work. Okay. Cheers, y'all. Bye, everybody.